Welcome to story time with Gwenpool! Ready for some stud grab and goon smash and bonus quest action? I'd help out, but I'm waiting on a paycheck. Ammo is really expensive here. Time to shine, true believer. So, these toothy and squid guys somehow got the impression that I totally wronged some of their gang and messed up an arms deal? I have no idea where they got that crazy notion. The next thing, it was all like... <sighs> Attention, Earthlings, we have your Gwenpool. Deliver to us one billion space clubex at your world of water and splash pools, or she is doomed. Seems the Tentacle Gang got this crazy idea that I was some kind of TVIP. Totally VIP, you know? I've no idea where they got that notion. Shame the big hitters didn't have enough time to help out. That's them unfriended. And if it wasn't RPG night at Modoc HQ, I'm sure Batroc and the guys would have shown up. Luckily for me, one of the finest feathered friends a girl could ever know had my back. Howard assembles his quack team. The cream of the best to fly to my rescue at the water park. Let's see. Oh, I get at least one of the Spider-Men on my team roster. And the second most awesome teen girl super. After yours truly, Ms. Marvel. A water park? Neat. I'm gonna go out to live here and say we really lucked out with this one. Quit messing around, kids. We've got work to do. Back to happen. seemed pretty expensive. It's a small price to pay, kiddo. Cool clothes, people. Party's over. Care of this. Dude, what do we put that bazooka? Into the tub, duck boy. Today's your lucky day. You're gonna fly. And you're sure this is the only way? What's the matter, Howard? You check in? I changed my mind. I want to get off. Well, it's safe to say Howard was not totally. 
thoroughly prepared for what happened next, and he was not pleased. Did I forget to mention the Squid Kids only captured my decoy? Oops. It seems the Squid Guys had trouble telling one Earth species from another. My little pork pal had fooled the aliens into thinking they had the original GP in their slimy clutches. Turns out I was huh? in the splash and slide all along at the other end of the park. What are the odds? Until next time, be good babies. Hi, and welcome to another calm and gentle Gwenpool bonus mission. Shh, turn your phones off and try not to make any loud noises because the three angriest dudes in Chronopolis are trying to tame their inner beast with some group anger management therapy. Hulk, Wonder Man, and A-Bomb seem in a happy place now, which means the furniture and walls shouldn't be getting smashed anytime soon. Let's leave it to it. Rats, who set that alarm off? Whoever it is is going to get triple pummeled now. Well, this is odd. And I've hung out with Doctor Strange, so I know odd. Hank Pym has captured himself. So the guy in the yellow jacket is, uh, yellow jacket, Hank Pym from someone else during his not so nice period. The little guy in the tube is our Hank Pym from now. The situation is making Wonder Man crabby, A-bomb irate, and Hulk confused. And we all know if Hulk gets confused, it's not long until Hulk gets... They're taking a break from the anger management session to, uh, break stuff. Don't even think about trying to stop me. There's only room for one Hank Pym here. Guys, over here! I'm trapped, and this glass is impenetrable! He's activated the security defense cannons! Watch out for those laser beams! No problem. I'll just smash up those turrets. <gasps> smash this Hulk's thing! Guys, seriously? Just focus. Puny lasers, no match for Hulk! Hank? What are you doing? It's not me! It's him! I know. I meant the other Hank. Oh, forget it. Uh, Hulk confused. Hank good or Hank bad? Seems like a bit of both, Hulk. We need to find a way to reach Yellow Jacket. And to do that, we're gonna need to disable that force field around him. Come on, Hank. I mean, Yellow Jacket. Can't we just talk this out? No deal, Simon. This mansion isn't big enough for two Hank Pims. Either he goes, or I take you all down. Well, I guess you don't leave us much choice. Good job, guys. You won't catch me. You. I thought I was a goner. Thanks, guys. Now to catch him. I mean me. I mean whatever. Sure glad Wasp isn't here to see this. He's gone into the vents. Leave this to me, guys. How do 
do I get myself in these crazy situations? Okay, I've had it with you, Yellow Jacket. Now feel my rage. approach work pretty well. <laughs> Maybe the guys don't need to work on their anger issues after all, seeing as they come in pretty handy. Hey, check this out. Help me, help me. So what I've been wondering is this. They've beaten Hank Pym Yellow Jacket from the future. So he knows how this will happen as he's Hank Pym from now. So surely he'd be able to figure out a way of beating his past self by remembering what he even did wrong. Unless he didn't want to remember because he knew he'd lose, so he... No, hang on. If he went back earlier, so... Uh, all is well, then. Or is it? I don't know. Ugh, time traveling is so confusing. Gwenpool doesn't like being confused. Now Gwenpool angry! Well, maybe I need to sign up for their anger classes. Later, Staters! Time for a checkup. Carnage and Venom have ended up at the clinic. They're feeling maybe the symbiotes are being a bit more controlly than usual. And it never hurts to get those things checked out. I mean, we've all been there, right? Ah, here comes the doctor now. What? That's clearly Dr. Kurt Connors, AKA the lizard, sporting a fake mustache and Oh, it wasn't a real clinic at all. Just some kind of ruse to capture Tweedledum and Dumber. Dr. Connors is probably wondering if there are elements in the symbiote's makeup that he can isolate to help with his unique lizardy problem. I mean, that's just a guess, but you know, I'm probably right. <laughs> Let's find out. Security notice. Staff are ordered by Dr. Connors to maintain vigilance at all times. Symbiotes are dangerous, like super dangerous. Don't say we didn't warn you. Have a great day. Hey, quit playing around with that stupid bear. It's time to break out of this place.
stupid fire! Stay back. If we can get around it, we can take that sucker out from behind. Jackpot. Now, all we need to do is get past that security scanner, and we're out. Easier than taking candy from a baby, and I know, because I've done it! around. We're not going to a fancy dress party, you know. We are so good at this stealth thing. We should join S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. I'd make a great agent. What? I mean, we should totally team up and take down Spider-Man in these disguises. Comical disguise detected. Initiating lockdown. Calling all available security guards. That'll teach you to try and trick me. Have a great day. That's fine. I was looking for a good fight anyway. Bring it on. So, my specimens think they can escape. We'll see about that. Why don't you pick on someone your own size, Connors? Oh, don't worry. I fully intend to. Just let us out of here already. I'll take him down, big guy. Access granted. Have a nice day, Dr. Connors. Just shut. With hindsight, maybe the stairs would have been a better option. The main thing is they got out. I'd suggest they head for a real hospital, but I think they might have had their fill of doctors. They seem happier with the whole symbiote thing, too. I mean, I've never seen them look happier. Aw, look at them frolic. I never had Venom down as a frolicker. Bad news for Dr. Connors, though. <clears throat> Rather than kidnapping spider folks, maybe he should try seeing a vet about his lizard thing. Just a thought. Stay out of trouble, kids! Sup, gamers! Squirrel Girl and friends, Koi Boy and Chipmunk Hunk are throwing a party in the park. Ahem. I mean, holding an awareness-raising event for the Fuzzy Foundation. Fuzzy, of course, standing for Friends of Unbeatable Zoocentric Youngsters. Maybe you need to work on a snappier title. And also not hold the event in a snowstorm? Check out that sweet cosplay dude they've got to MC. That costume is awesome! It almost looks like the real MODOK. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So anyway, everyone was having a great time, despite the snow. But then strange things started to happen. Fight! Harsh words are bellowed, all seemingly in the vicinity of a funny-looking squirrel beast. This is not going to help improve the rep of woodland rodents. Squirrel Girl thinks she smells the work of an old foe, Roboto Skr, a.k.a. Girl Squirrel. Some trickster squirrel from Asgard that spreads discord and general bad juju. Should it be sparking like that? Like it's a robot? These poor critter lovers have been mind-messed into breaking up the meditation class. And I don't think putting those turtles in the boating lake will make them less angry, guys. The water looks freezing. That's just a waste of good pizza! 
the suspiciously well-costumed MC urges the heroes to restore order and the good name of rodents everywhere. Go get them, forest friends! Dang! I think we've seen this thing before, and we defeated it, but last time we had a lot of help. Oh, this could get messy. They have hostages, and that music. Oh. Not your thing? <laughs> I'm kind of digging it. Again. Oh, now this is nice. <laughs> if I had some nuts right now, you could leave me here all day. Beautiful. Oh, how long have you been sat on that piece of solid gold punnery? Since I came up with my name. This should be easy. Yo, Koi Boy, Sally Forth, speak to those turtles and tell them to cease and desist their harassment of the good people of New York. I cannot communicate with these creatures. Are turtles fish? Hmm. Are they fish adjacent? Sometimes I wonder whether you guys understand my powers at all. I mean, they're kind of fish adjacent. I would have thought you could do that. I have to say, I'm a little disappointed. Hey. <gasps> Don't be like that. I'm still useful. I'm gonna get in there and take a look. And what do you have? 
A large, bushy tail. A chipmunk punk. A floundering fish. And a nut buster! Uh, where's the nut buster? <gasps> Roboto Skr! Attack! <laughs> Stark beefed up security. I had to improvise. Besides, this thing is cheaper to run. Get ready, Modoc. It's time to eat nuts and kick butts. And sadly for you, I'm all out of nuts. <laughs> a mile away. Remember I mentioned it in the intro cutscene? A real cosplay piece would have passed out by now from wearing all that paper mache. Modoc's plan to besmirch the good name of our bushy-tailed heroine is up in smoke. And Doreen has come out with even more cred than before. Hashtag ironic plan backfire, Modoc. All that's left is for Koi Boy to stop making fish puns. We get it already and for the robot squirrel to get to tech support. Then we can save progress with a clear conscience. Bye! Hey, just because this is a bonus mission, don't you be thinking it's not absolutely vital for you to get 100% completion. Since Kang has isolated us in Chronopolis, S.H.I.E.L.D. have found themselves without their usual array of cool tech and specialist field agents. Not good given the range of new and unusual goons running all over the place. The most senior agent left in the field to get those agents into shape is... Phil Coulson! He's got an idea to make a training simulator with what he's got to hand. An old ghost train! A ghost train with lasers! Awesome! You guys have got to help Phil to get this up and running. Can't wait to play that. He'll just need a little hacking help from Quake to get the retro computers up and running. And turn off any repetitive songs on the ride. Me, I love those tunes. Love the way they get stuck in my head. Ever since we arrived in Chronopolis, I've been developing a training system for our agents to face the many dangers here. I call it the Field Agents Risk Threat Simulator. Wouldn't that make it? We don't have to come up with an acronym for everything. Anyway, it's almost ready. I just need some help with the last few components. Whoa, hey, these computers seem pretty old. Is someone betting that floppy disks will come back into fashion? Relics of a bygone era. Don't worry, we erased everything on them. Uh, I think you got a virus. Well, that's just great. I thought our tech team had fixed this. You tell people not to open emails from people claiming to be Captain America, but do they listen? The system's up and running. What's next? All we need to do now is flip the breaker switches, and we're good to go.
great. So you feel like taking this baby for a spin? Hop in. I see Lulers had a refit. recently, though I'm more of an ancient Rome man myself, less sand. Give me a hand, will ya? Oh! I'm all over this game. At what point do I stop being a cameo and start being a star?
Hey, you're all done. Now head over to my glamorous assistant to see how you scored. Wow. I hope we recorded that. That must be some kind of record. What do you know? Phil's idea actually worked! After a fashion, he's created a literal on-rail shooter. If Kang ever deploys a cardboard army that stays rooted to the spot, then these new agents will tear them apart in seconds! Ha! Seriously, though, I do think there's more mileage in theme park ride training simulators. A Milano roller coaster would be cool. Ooh! How about a Kang's Crazy Teacups ride? You know, for the youngins, I'm going to write this down. See you in a while, me amigos! Hear ye, stout yeomen of Chronopolis! I, fair maid Gwenpool, hath accepted the challenge of mentoring the squires of Lego through the perilous... Uh, bonus quests, privy? That's tough to keep up, so I'll talk all modern-like and tell you the tale of King Arthur and the Dragon. <laughs> Are you slouching comfortably? Then I'll begin. Once upon a time, King Arthur Pendragon was getting all riled up, thinking people were doubting his kingliness. Even though he'd done the whole business with the sword and the stone, and King is like his first name. Naturally, Merlin was like, Cool at your kingship, you're acing the whole king gig. All the peasants are big fans. But his kingliness was all like, Maybe, but the only way I'll be a real old school king is if I totally slay a dragon. Difficult to find, though, you're an actual dragon. Fortunately, Merlin has an app on his wand that finds local available dragons for the slaying. Hmm. One in the basement of Garrett Castle? Seems a little too easy to me. Could it be a trap? Even if it is, it'll make an awesome boss fight. Where art thou, fiendish dragon? Show thy ugly face! Sire, we must be careful. I sense a great magical presence in the air. Ah! My dear friend Merlin, you forget that I wield the Sword of Excalibur! Magic is no match for the true king of ah, Camelot. But sire... Silence! Whether it be your fancy magic or the flames of a brutish beast, I shall defeat whomever stands in my way to prove that I am the worthy king of these strange lands. Well... Uh, yes. Very good, sire. Behold, the dragon is through the gate ahead. We haven't one moment to lose. Then let us make haste, Merlin. It appears the dragon has lured us into some sort of trap. Well, I say to thee, dragon, nay! These spikes are a pitiful foe. Onwards, old friend! <laughs> On guard, dragon! Feel the wrath of Excalibur! Morgana! I should have known I would find you lurking in such a dark and dastardly place. Tell me, what pathetic schemes have you cooked up in your cauldron pot of witchcraft this time? My dear, dim-witted half-brother, I'm afraid your time on this world has run out. Now, Morgan Le Fay rules supreme. Finally, I can take my place as the true ruler of... Yes, yes, do get on with it. Merlin and I have tickets to the pig jousting this afternoon. Indeed we do, sire. I believe it is time that the great Morgan Le Fay met her match. <laughs> <laughs> 
burning. Your parlor tricks are no match for my powers. It's such a pity. I really wanted to battle a dragon today. <laughs> Folks dearly regret that. You pathetic insects. How dare you think you can oh. defeat me? <laughs> this far, but now you shall both meet your doom. You wanted to face a dragon. Well, I can do better than that. Observe! Ha! Better than a dragon! Enough of these childish playground antics, Wolfga. Come down here and face me! Very well. But first, I'd like to introduce you to my new pet. Goodness! What an odd looking fellow. Look out, sire! Oh dear! <laughs> yes! Yes! Destroy them, my pet! <laughs> My dear Merlin, this beast may be a colorful foe, but I don't see how such an item could help us win this battle. Hast thou misplaced thy marbles? Nay, sire. Thou must show patience to defeat such an intelligent creature. What a pleasant tune you play, Merlin. Remarkable! Look! The creature dances like a court jester! Stop that! What are you doing? <laughs> I command you to cease! So Arthur didn't slay a dragon, but he has to be happy with blitzing that Cree sentry into a bazillion pieces, right? And maybe now old Artie will stop worrying about if he's worthy and start actually doing proper king stuff, like... Uh, waving, opening malls, burning spinning wheels. Standard king stuff. Tip of the pointy hat to Merlin, too, for bringing the pain to Morgana. He sure rolled some critical hits on that female M.U. What? M.U.? As in magic user? Methinks thou doth need to brush up on ye old RPG lingo. Welcome back, O oh seekers of the pink bricks! Fame! She can be a cruel and fickle mistress. And my pal, Howard the Duck, is aware of that more than most today. He's not feeling the love from his fellow man for all his saving-the-day heroic do-goodery. I mean, that 
that's not why he does it. But a pat on the back every now and again wouldn't hurt. What Howard needs to get people talking about him is a full tilt, immersive, genre defining, massively multiplayer online video game with his beak on the cover! As luck would have it, there's a games con going on just the other side of the park. Exactly the place to pitch a Howard multi platform title! Ah, teeny problem. The Access All Areas passes for the convention sold out months ago, dude. You'll have to use some of your quack foo ingenuity to get past those lines and pitch your game idea to the panel. The guy next to Howard seems to want to help. Who is he? Let me check one sec. Four Bushman? Even I ain't never heard of this guy. I'm wondering if he's after his own game, too. That might be stretching things a little. But what do I know? If he can help Howard, then he's okay by me. Hello, Manhattanites! Welcome to Timely Comics HQ, where we've got everything you could possibly want for all your timely needs. Come on in and get your geek on, people. This is ChronoCon! Sold out? Well, that's just great. I knew we shouldn't have stopped for drive through Now we'll never get into the panel. Hey, Howard, why don't we come up with a distraction? You know, so we can sneak in without needing passes. Nah, that'd never work. Wait, I know. I'll create a distraction so we can sneak in without needing passes. Why didn't I think of that before? Hey! <laughs> That's what I just did. Right down. You blow our cover. Now to put my ingenious plan into action. Listen up, folks. I, I mean, attention convention attendees or something. We have a limited number of tickets available at the main desk downstairs for you to have your dream selfie with Tony Stark. That's right, Iron Man himself. Billionaire superstar, blah, 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 whatever. So hurry up. Well, would you look at that? A pretty flawless plan if I do say so myself. Don't worry, all you lovely, loyal people that are still here. We've got so many other great guests for you. I mean, who needs Iron Man when we have the Shocker? So, uh, come on in and, and, and meet your heroes. Get an autograph, take some selfies, and share them online. Nah, it was already broke when I got here. Now this is what I call an upgrade. Iron Man, eat your heart out. <laughs> Man, that suit is, uh, well, it's something. I mean, it's no Mark 17, but I'm definitely digging it. Man. Does anyone know his secret identity? Answers to me on a postcard, or preferably a less antiquated digital social media platform. Go. Heap of junk! Who'd pay to come and look at a glorified oven mitt? Mmm, that sounded smashy. Guessing that gauntlet has to be worth, like, at least a bajillion dollars. Trust me, I'm pretty good with maps.
How do I get my... You know, the way that Stanley animatronic is... Ta Anyone else concerned that Howard the Duck and Forbish Man are trashing the place? Not seem odd to anyone else? Just me? All right. Looks like we've got some technical difficulties. Whoa! Stand back, folks! And Super Green Skin Smash Troll Brothers is no more. Operation Cap Wolf is an X game. And say goodbye to Luke Cage Bass Fishing? <sighs> hey, everybody! Check out this brand new video game featuring yours truly. Available in all good stores in Chronopolis. And some bad ones. Yes, this game is rad! The lesser spotted, much underappreciated Howard the Duck, ladies and gentlemen. Get over here, Howie. Victory lap time. It really is that easy to get a game made. If you happen to be a duck in a time-locked city, that is. Sure, they all look happy now. But what about when they get 100%? What then? Does the game have any super bonus brick gathering bonus adventures? No? You'll need a day one patch, my friend, and sharpish. Just don't let old Panhead near it. I think he's struggling with actual reality. Never mind the virtual kind. What am I saying? Howard's game has got Howard in it. He doesn't need anything else. Give me a coffee. Let me through. Howdy, partners. Saddle up, because I'm fired up and ready to take you through on another one of my special missions. This one's going to take you way back to the old west. Bad guys' faces swollen, keep them pink bricks rolling, Gwenpool! Rawhide Kid and his longtime brother in arms, Red Wolf, have received news that an old foe is back in town. The Living Toto. <laughs> Our heroes head into town. Spurred on by the townsfolk, they are steered to the saloon. Come on, you varmints! That was two cowboy puns right there! Inside the saloon, our boys find the living totem hard at work. Completing a death ray? Forging a metal army? No. Rehearsing in his one alien show. Humans are mean and should just be conquered already. Dinner theater? Will these villains stop at nothing? How exactly do you go about defeating a giant indestructible alien totem pole? I'm not going to be much help as I haven't read this stuff. Lucky for you youngins, the kid and Red Wolf's gonna learn us how. This town ain't big enough for the three of them. Yeehaw! All right. This darn totem has got to be around here somewhere. Look, Rawhide. Over there. Put him up, totem. You ain't fooling no one around these parts. Well, that's one suspect down, I guess. No way Living Totem would have gone down that easy. I hope we don't have to pay for that damage. Don't worry about it, Wolfie. Word travels fast, and that word is that you don't mess with the Rawhide Kid.
prefer of you putting that decoy over there. I challenge you to a quick draw. Your move, creep. Are you serious? Careful now, Rawhide. You don't want to get a splinter. Look out! It's heading right for us. Back in that hole you crawled out of, or you'll have us to deal with. Nothing to say, huh? Ain't nobody buying this statue act of yours, least of all me. I know who you are. Uh, Ride. Hot down, Wolfie. I believe this may be a normal tote. I think I saw it move. Stand back! Ladies and gentlemen, Introducing your entertainment for tonight, performing its very own one totem stage show, the one, the only, please put your hands together for the living totem. I wandered lonely as a totem pole that crashed, was lost, and then was set upon by raging beasts the horrid race of men. And now, I must ask you, to tem or not to tem? That is the question. Shouldn't have come back here, Totem. Your evil doing days are at an end. Who dares interrupt my performance? Why can't you just leave me alone? Look, it's working. He's slipping on the water. Uh, yeah! We've got you now. You cannot stop theater. Uh you got him to slip up on water? That's it? Jeez, some bad dude, huh? No wonder he's not up there with the big villains like Kang and Thanos. Turns out this poor sap never wanted to be on Earth anyway. He crash landed here in the Old West, and the first people he met buried him underground. Typical, huh? All he really wants is to get home, and the theater group was just a way of him raising money to build a spaceship. Hmm, not sure he'd have raised that much cash on stage. His acting is a bit wooden. <laughs> get it? I made a bunny. Red Wolf suggests that maybe Totem can hitch a ride with some other friendly space travelers. He won't have to look far to find some, what with things being so messed up around here. Can't seem to throw a rock right now and not hit an alien. Heck, the Guardians of the Galaxy would take him. They've already got Groot, so they're no strangers to wooden space dudes. Hasta luego! Trick or treat! Is it Halloween in the Hydra Empire? Sadly not. Living Mummy, Morbius, and Man-Thing are simply trying to enjoy a cup of joe at a cafe. But unfortunately, they seem to be upsetting the locals, which is getting our hideous trio a little ticked. Where's the tolerance for the unusual in the city? Man-Thing seems to say with his slurping vegetable mouth. Sorry, Moss Features. Hydra folks are not known for their accepting and fun-loving personalities. I'd be more scared of them than they are of you, to be honest. Hold the phone. Maybe I was wrong about Hydra's attitude to fun. A parade? Through Hydra Square? Perfect, thinks Morbius. If we enter a float, give out sweets, we can show everyone we are not just three hideous monsters. <laughs> Uh, Man-Thing is on board. The living mummy just moans at all the work he'll have to do. Ooh, hammering. I love a parade, and I love monsters. So I'm super excited to see how this turns out. Go on, help these poor dudes while I try to get in on the fun. See if you can spot me. Good luck with the crazy float idea, monster dudes. 
here we are, live at the weekly Red Skull Honorary Parade in Hydra Square. And oh my, oh my, do we have some wonderful parade floats on show today. That's right, Gwen. They sure know how to put on a good show here in the Hydra Empire. Come, my friends. We must construct our parade float and win first prize! Okay, okay. Looks like we have a new float being prepared down below, Gwen. Yes, Gwen. It seems like the monstrous trio of Morbius, Living Mummy, and Man-Thing want to join in on the fun, too! <laughs>
Well, Gwen, in all my years of commentating on this legendary Hydra Parade, I can't say I've ever seen anything like this before. You said it, Gwen. Yes, Gwen. Yes, I did. Ah, it's more beautiful than I ever imagined. Now to sit back and enjoy the ride with a nice glass of plasma. Mmm, plasma. We are no heroes. We are monsters and proud of it. All aboard, toot toot. Our three monsters certainly showed the folk of the Hydra Empire that they're not just hideous, shambling oddballs. Taking pride of place in the parade, our boys are showing a new, open, and friendly side to the crowd. Maybe the civilians weren't quite ready to see this new side, however. In fact, it's difficult to tell exactly what's going through the crowd's mind, as they seem to be stunned into silence, or maybe paralyzed with fear. It's a tough crowd, this one, guys. I think even adorably cute Groot would have a hard time melting those hearts. Still, if the crowd turn ugly, the living mummy has loads of bandages to patch up his boys if they take a bump. I'm going to try and make good our escape. Onward! Are you game for some more bonus, button bashing, bonus mission stuff? Sure you are! And not to give away spoilers, this one has cake at the end! A couple of the Avengers have been invited to Star-Lord's ship to set up a surprise party for Gamora. Party games, food, and dancing, awesome! I imagine, as Gamora was Thanos' adopted daughter, parties might not have featured much in her childhood. <coughs> Less petting zoos and ice cream, more ultimate cage fighting and evil laughter lessons. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like this party was a surprise for Star-Lord, too. The way he's looking at Cap and Spidey's balloons, I'd say he totally forgot all about the party. Good thing for Star-Lord, Cap has exactly the can-do attitude that's needed to get the party started. In my day, we could get a swell shindig going with the flick of a broom, powdered egg, and a bugler. Okay, so I'm paraphrasing from stuff I heard in old war movies, but the point Cap is trying to make is once all the mess has been cleaned up, all that's needed for Gamora's party is eats and good tunes. Go, little guy! Show him who's boss! These creatures, they do not work together. It's just an expression, Drax. Yeesh. Well, that's just great. What are we supposed to do for fun now? I could recount my list of 100 greatest victories in battle. Yeah, I think I'd rather watch my whiskers grow. Hey, do you mind not smashing up my ship with your novelty flying disc? It's a shield. Who throws a shield, dude? Boy, I could use a superhero. Seems simple enough. Align the circuits, totally unnecessary, but okay. Why does everything run on some form of electricity? Get some food out for these people before they get angry. I am Groot. It totally is a word. It's hungry and angry. Hey, give me a hand, will ya? Place is dead. We need to get this party jumping.
not just amazing or spectacular, I'm pretty useful too. Who's up for a little dancing? Ah, uh, I don't really dance. You sure? I got a killer soundtrack planned. to notice. Uh, this was a surprise party for her, dude. Well, she certainly looks surprised. I reckon when she's gotten over the shock of the Milano having been cleaned up, she'll get her groove on and partay with the rest. I'm sure the galaxy can do without its guardians for one night. <laughs> 